Um, could I get a hint how to save the others? Seriously? Are you a Keyblade wielder, or aren't you? Haven't you already learned how to restore someone's heart after it's been lost? In Kingdom Hearts 3, after Xehanort and the Heartless kill the Guardians of Light, Sora finds himself in Purgatory in a special place known as the Final World, thanks to Kairi, a place that sits near sleep and death. Once Sora gets help piecing himself back together with Fendus's Chirithi, Sora asks Chirithi for a hint of how to save the others. Chirithi asks Sora if he had already learned how to restore someone's heart after it's been lost, aka death. Sora asks if he is talking about the power of waking. Chirithi doesn't confirm or deny. Shortly after using the power of waking to save most of the guardians, Sora is approached by young Xehanar who tells him he is not using the power of waking correctly. The power of waking isn't meant to save hearts from death, nor is it meant to use worlds to chase after hearts, and abusing it in such a way will inevitably lead to Sora's own death. Even after a reminder of his abuse of the power and Mickey's additional warning that he is using the power of waking incorrectly, Sora uses the power of waking once again to revive Kairi and by the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, Sora seemingly dies. Why can't Sora use the power of waking this way? Is there a way to revive someone from death without putting yourself at risk? I will answer these questions in my Kingdom Hearts Power of Revival theory. So let's dive on in. To start off, we know that in the universe of Kingdom Hearts, we know that death and sleep are so close, there is an occasional crossover between people walking along either. This was stated by Chirithi when Sora was being briefed on what the final world is. In Kingdom Hearts, there is a special thing known as the power of waking which can be used to traverse hearts to reach worlds and free any heart from its sleep. Now, as shown in Kingdom Hearts 3, the power of waking can be used to revive someone from death, however, this is an incorrect way of doing it and repeated use of the power of waking in this method will inevitably lead to the user's own death. We see this happen to Sora after he uses the power of waking first to save the Guardians of Light and then uses it one more time to save Kairi from death. But that made me wonder, is there a power that can be used to revive someone from the dead under the right circumstances? And have we seen it before? I think we have. This special power would be known, obviously, as the power of revival. Now, unlike the power of waking, this power cannot be earned, rather it would be a special power one is born with. Only exceptionally powerful hearts with a natural born talent for it can use this power, but it isn't something that can be used right away. Of course, when the fact that this power is a natural born power, the question arises on who has it. I think there are only two people with a natural born heart, maybe three. Those two being Sora and Lushu. Now before I explain Sora and Lushu with the power of revival more, I will need to explain more about the power of revival itself. Now unlike the power of waking, the power of revival doesn't require a keyblade due to it being a natural born ability. The power of revival is meant to chase hearts and transport hearts to or the user to a specific location using worlds. Pretty much the opposite of the power of waking. Just like the power of waking, there is a negative side effect for incorrect use, and the power of revival can be used on oneself. The power of revival also has no time limit, and I'll get to why in a second. Now that I have explained the power of revival, let me explain why I think Sora and Lushu have this power. First, let me talk about Sora. So, Sora, I feel, definitely has the power of revival due to a few different moments in the series that would suggest so. First off, Sora's heart has proven itself to be a cut above the rest and something that is astronomically powerful since birth, considering that it helped save Ven's heart the minute it was born, and also let's not forget that Ansem the Wise said that in Dreamed Off Distance, that Sora has the power to bring back those who were believed to have been gone forever or not exist. Kingdom Hearts 3 made sure to let the audience know that Roxas and Xion's hearts were inside Sora, therefore they still existed, and made it clear that it was very much possible to bring them back. Now the question comes up of whether or not Sora has used the power and is he aware of it? Well, 
Sora definitely isn't aware of it, but someone else is. But Sora has used this power before. It may not have been successful and fully aware attempts, but he used it nonetheless. Remember when Ven's heart was damaged again at the end of Birth by Sleep? According to Vanitas' heart, his heart was supposed to vanish forever, or die in simpler terms, but was suddenly saved by Sora. I think this was Sora unintentionally using this power to save his quote, brother. A big reason why I say this is because Ventus didn't just happen to find his way to Sora. Sora, with the help of Riku's advice, called out to him. He may have unintentionally used the power to have Ven's heart traverse, his to reach Destiny Islands. Now I know people would say that it was because of Sora and Ventus's deep connection that guided them, but I think it was that they had a strong connection, so Sora was able to use that connection with his power of revival to save him. This also leads into a possible negative side effect of the power. Just like how the power of waking side effect is death, the power of revival side effect is sleep. The side effect casts the victim's heart into a deep sleep. Only under either circumstances or the power of waking can the heart be recovered. The next instance was during Kingdom Hearts 1 when he looked through Kairi's memories. The reason why I say this is because, one, besides giving the audience a proper recounting of the Keyblade War for the first time via Kairi's grandmother, I can't see any reason why this scene is here. And two, Sora, in his mind, was desperately thinking about bringing Kairi back and King Mickey. That deep desire more than likely triggered the power of revival, but since neither heart was lost, it ultimately did nothing for him. Now, before someone could argue that it seems a little far-fetched to think that Sora could just bring out the power because he desired to help someone, let's not forget that Sora relearned the power of waking this way because Aqua was about to be killed by Vernitas and Sora was desperately wanting to save her at all costs. The next instance is when Sora finishes piecing himself back together and proceeds to look for the Guardians. Remember, Kairi was the one who helped keep Sora alive to save everyone, but she died too, just like the others. Isn't it weird that Kairi didn't need to get revived via the power of waking like everyone else, yet died just like everyone else? I mean, Namine's heart was in the final world, full proof that Kairi did indeed die. Next instance would be after Sora saves all the other guardians and finds himself reunited with Kairi. Remember, Sora, once he saved everyone else, was deeply desiring to find Kairi's heart. And this is when he essentially revives himself. Now, this is slight speculation, and the reason I mentioned these scenes is because of the special area around Sora during these instances. Never under any other circumstances have we seen this dark tunnel with yellow streaks and a light at the end. This part isn't exactly important to the theory, but I felt like I should mention it. Now, Lushu, I suspect, also has the power of revival because he was able to bring back all the foretellers except for Ava, when they had all died in the war centuries ago. And it seems like Ava didn't return because of Lushu's choice. Maybe that's why the Master didn't make Lushu a foreteller, because he knew that if he was involved like everyone else in the war, he would just use his power of revival to revive all the fallen foretellers and Keyblade wielders, you know, pretty much during the war. I'm not sure if the Master himself has the power, he could very well have it, but there really isn't anything I could find as proof that the Master does indeed have the power. Now, like I said, the power revival has no time limit seeing as Lucia was able to use it on the foretellers when they had died centuries ago. This is more than likely part of the Master's plan, to wait until the second Keyblade War happens and in the aftermath, Lucia gets his Keyblade back and uses the power revival to bring back everyone back except there's two things that the Master probably didn't account for. One is Ava not being there. Ava's disappearance, as Lushu stated, has something to do with her role and the fact that she learned about the Master's plan before anyone else. There are two explanations for why Ava is missing in my opinion. First is that she is back but simply arrived at a different place. When the power is used, I suspect that if used properly, it brings the dead back from the same place they fell. This would also mean that Ava didn't die in the Keyblade War after facing our player and simply retreated someplace else to try and do something against the Master's plan. This is very likely because 
After Ava learns of Lushu's role and the master's plan, she seems way more jaded and distant from other people and she seems like she isn't fully on board with the plan and after she fights our player, she just walks away and we don't really see her again. The other explanation is that Lushu isn't ready to summon her back yet because she knows too much. He would need to bring her back under the right circumstances so she would be in no position to alert the other foretellers of what's going on and she would have to obey the master to a T. The second thing that the master didn't account for is someone else being special enough to be born with the same power of revival as Lushu aka Sora. So the next conflict will have both sides who can use this special one of a kind power. I also suspect that Yensid knows that Sora has the power. This may be the reason why Yensid stressed the fact that Sora needs to learn the power of waking because Riku and Mickey both had it so it wasn't like Sora was the only person capable of freeing a heart from its sleep. He knew that Sora could accidentally misuse his revival power and either cast him or Aqua in a deep sleep. I also think this is why Yen Sid never bothered to mention the negative side effects of misusing the power of waking to Sora because he knows that Sora can simply revive himself if conditions were met. Now I also think that the power of revival is related to where Sora is now in terms of the secret ending. Maybe we have been speculating wrong about Shibuya. Maybe this isn't a new world line, but simply a new realm. This realm would be the realm of death. Probably should have named this theory that, but <laughs> too late now. Anyway, we already know about the realm of light, dark, and in between that serve as the realms of normal reality. Then there's also the realm of sleep, made up of the worlds that were saved from darkness but couldn't fully recover. In Kingdom Hearts, the opposite of sleep is death, so maybe the realm of death is a place for worlds to go to once it sinks to the bottom of the dark abyss, transporting those hearts to a near inescapable place and only the strongest of hearts can actually find refuge. Shibuya is in the realm of death, I believe. Remember what young Xehanort said to Sora? Death lies at the bottom of the abyss, the realm of death. So, so here are the explanations for our four characters in the secret ending being in the realm of death. Sora being there because he misused the power of waking, but due to his heart being so strong and having the special power of revival, he was spared complete death. Riku being there because he is chasing after Sora using the power of waking. Yuzora is probably a native of the world of Shibuya and was there when his world died but due to his heart being so astronomically strong, he is now burdened to live in his own isolated world. And of course the Master of Masters vanished himself to this realm as a part of his plan. I suspect in the next saga that Sora and Riku will be tricked by the Master to revive Shibuya for one reason or another but will later receive help from Yazora, and in exchange, Sora will learn how to control his power of revival to help return Yazora and Shibuya back to life. This would prove to be not a part of the Master's original plan, since he planned to have Lushu revive him, but since Sora could also get the job done, it doesn't change too much to have Sora do this. This could also explain why all of the main Kingdom Hearts characters are in Shibuya in the Kingdom Hearts 3 box art. It serves as a premonition of what will happen in the future. Sora will revive the world of Shibuya from death and basically return the Master of Masters to the Foretellers and Lushu, excluding Ava because she wasn't there that would make up the six hooded figures on the Kingdom Hearts 3 box art because Lushu didn't bring her back along with the other Foretellers. I think I could even explain the Darkling in the box art. Darklings are basically Keyblade Wielders from Kingdom Hearts Key that get turned into Heartless. So obviously the Darkling is someone we know from Kingdom Hearts Key but is on the side of the heroes. I think it could be Ava. Maybe that's why Ava didn't return like the others because she became a heartless after the war, probably wanted to be far from the master's plan as possible and to see the darkness side of life. It could also be someone else from Union Cross or simply isn't meant to be anyone, but is meant to represent that the next saga, the protagonist will be a bit closer to the side of darkness than light when facing the Foretellers and the Master, and of course that the heroes will have allies in the form of the Dandelions and maybe some other Keyblade Wielders from Union Cross. Well guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this was a tough theory to push out. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this. 
uh, be on the lookout for my next video. Uh, it, it will be the return of Kingdom Hearts Explain. I will be explaining Kingdom Hearts itself. So, hope you guys are looking forward to that. I just, I certainly, I, I certainly am looking forward to it. So, hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you guys rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Twitter and my Twitch. This has been Noir Lobomber, and I'm out.